Hi there, we're going to talk about uh, Google Forms in 2015, a few changes that uh, you should be aware of and how to use it as well. So you have to be logged in your Google Apps account as you can see I am. Uh, when you click on new, you'll see that it's no longer in the drop down. You have to click on more, go to Google Forms. Uh, in this, you, I'm using a shared folder, in your case it wouldn't make a difference. Okay. So once you're logged in, you create your form questionnaire. So we're going to go uh, sample questionnaire. Sorry, I'm going to put that up here. Sample questionnaire. And below you would include your different questions that you would send out uh, to students like, how are things today? So like in the past options in Google, uh, forms, you have several options. You can have a text, paragraph text, uh, multiple choice. Now this is just one word, okay, just so you can see the difference here. Paragraph text is longer answer and uh, multiple choice and a whole bunch of other options that have always kind of been there. So as you probably know, these, when they will be sent out to, to your students, will be answered and go to a spreadsheet, okay? So one of the things I find really useful is the ability to add images. For example, in geography, I'll put a map and have students uh, identify some of the uh, key locations. Another tool I find extremely useful is adding videos. Um, so you'll put a video and have students write comments in. It's another way to work uh, with videos. You can use tools like edpuzzle.com, uh, but uh, sometimes it's just quicker to just add a YouTube video in uh, that way. So um, we're going to just leave it with one question right now to show some of the newer features. So let's look at, uh, this has always been here, but uh, often if I put a form on a public web page, I will uncheck this because people have to be checked in. This is if you want to collect your uh, user number. But what I always do is I just add a question, a uh, text question, like as the first question, what is your name? And one of the things that's essential is you can move this up, by the way. Uh, decide if you want that to be a required question. So when they press the button at the end of the uh, form, um, it will not submit until they've answered this question. So obviously, I need to know their name. So I'm going to go back up here. So that the reason why I would do this is if you want it to be on a website and you wanted it to be open and not having them logged in, which you'll find out if students need to be logged in on your form, it can be a bit of a pain, especially if it's on a website. Normally, I would uncheck this, okay? Show a progress bar, not really necessary, but some people like to have that. Uh, only one response per person. As you can see, it requires you to log in. Um, and this is one of the new features. It allows you, if you're doing a multiple choice question uh, test, to shuffle the questions. Okay, so that's really neat. Just click on it and it's activated. Just go to the bottom here. Um, so if you're allowing students to resubmit more than once, you would check this off. If it's a test, I would usually uncheck this. Okay, so that they don't need to be able to resubmit. But if it was a form to collect data or information, I would definitely do that. Um, publish and show a public link to form results. So they can see sort of like uh, a survey the results so you can add that in here and uh, everybody will be able to see that uh, another thing is if they submit their questionnaire and you want them to still be able to change their answer you would check this okay so this has been there for a while uh, but uh, all right so now we're pretty much done we're going to just change our theme so we'll scroll down here let's pretend we're like we like that one okay we're going to go we're happy with that um, one of the things that uh, you can do is see what the live form looks like before you publish it. So there you go, looks good. So we're going to go back over here to my form. We're going to go back to uh, edit questions and responses. Um, one of the things that uh, it will usually ask you to do, and we're going to do this right now, is that we're going to change response destination. So we want the responses to go in a new spreadsheet. Okay, it's more effective if you do it this way for data analysis and so, so on. Uh, so I always create it in a new spreadsheet. So it creates a separate document for the form and a spreadsheet where your answers go. All right. Uh, 
One of the newer features and uh, forms in 2015 are the add-ons. So we'll go to get add-ons and we'll probably make some videos about this later. Uh, but uh, one of the add-ons I use the most in uh, the classroom is Dr. Puss. Okay, so let's type it in, uh, Dr. Puss. So now this will, I just realized that this will actually have to be added on in the other extra form that we just created. So let's go to that uh, form right here. So we're going to go and click add-ons over here. So this is the spreadsheet section of the form. So there's two parts, the form itself and the uh, spreadsheet. So let's go get add-ons. So now we're going to go and type, I wrote Dr. Plus, but I meant Flubberoo. Uh, so Flubberoo is the one that will analyze all your answers and you have to run it. And it will basically create a multiple choice self-grading quiz. So we're going to do another uh, video on that shortly. So two areas to get add-ons. I kind of went over it quickly and it would be, uh, we'll definitely try to highlight some of the better ones in another video. So if you check in here, you'll see the ones you can add to your spreadsheet. If you go back to your form, there's the add-ons that you can add to your uh, Google form, okay? Hopefully that was useful. Uh, thank you very much.